Okay, we're joining the interview room by Gonzaga head coach Mark Few. Coach, welcome to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe opening comment about the game tomorrow night. Uh, I mean, obviously, quick turnaround for us. Man, we got home at uh, like 3 a.m. Uh, Monday morning. So, uh, uh, but excited as heck, uh, you know, to have another week with the guys and be involved in another Sweet 16. And obviously, uh, uh, we've got a lot of experience playing here at T-Mobile, even against UCLA. And uh, it's going to be a great environment uh, tomorrow night. And, and uh, we know we're in for a huge, huge uh, uh, challenge of just their experience and their toughness and their, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, kind of general will to win. Uh, but uh, looking forward to it. Steve. Hi, Marsh. Steve Kirk with the uh, Sporting Tribune. Fifteen years ago, the WCC of Mike Gilrin took a shot on Vegas by moving the tournament to New Orleans. How much credit should the WCC and Gonzaga given its success? 12 wins in the 15 and three runner-ups. How much credit should you guys take for having this regional here in Las Vegas? I mean, we don't take any credit for it, but I mean, we were, uh, back then, you remember this, we were pushing hard just for a neutral side of any kind. We used to play our conference tournament at a predetermined site. I mean, half, most of the time it was never even at the number one. So when we first started our run, we had to go basically play a road game to qualify for this tournament. Um, and so I, I, th I give, uh, you know, Commissioner Gillerand and then uh, at the time uh, the leadership at Gonzaga, Mike Roth and, and, and our president uh, for pushing that through. And it ended up being a brilliant move, um, you know, and we've been here, I don't know how long, what is it, 15 years you said? And then, and, and, like, I know you guys were here and felt this, but, like, this year especially, uh, I mean, it's the place to be now in uh, conference tournament week. I mean, there was just so much energy, and you're just, you're walking down the street, and, you know, there's WCC teams, there's Pac-12 teams and fans, there's WAC teams, there's Mountain West. I mean, it, 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 it's, you know, like a mini little Final Four around here um, that week in the conference tournament. So it makes for a great exciting uh, environment to bring your teams down to. Over here. Uh, Dennis Patchen with KHQ SWX. Mark, can you talk about the significance of eight straight Sweet 16s on what it means for your program and the university itself? I mean, I think it's, Dennis, it's one of the greatest, probably 1A and 1B, the Sweet 16 run and the uh, uh, of eight years and then, uh, you know, making it 25 years straight. Uh, is probably the thing I'm most proud about, uh, what all our teams have been able to uh, accomplish. It means we've stayed relevant. Uh, you know, we haven't dropped off. We haven't, you know, taken a year in the NIT or a couple years in the NIT. We haven't lost the first round. Um, and uh, I, I just, again, the, the guys deserve all the credit for just maintaining that kind of winning DNA and just figuring it out. I mean, as you know, you followed us all year this year. It's you know, this probably wasn't looking realistic there way back in November, early December. All right, right down front. Connor Morissette, Sports Illustrated Media Group. Coach, when you look at the teams in the Sweet 16, 11 different conferences are represented. What does that tell you about college basketball? And do you think basketball-wise, it's still as important as it used to be to be in a big conference? I mean, I think it just tells you there's a, a lot of really, really good teams out there. And I think with everything that's going on um, from – really, really good players leaving early to, uh, you know, this COVID year stuff where it seems like 27-year-olds are playing now. Um, uh, it definitely, everything's kind of shrinking to the mean. But when you're out there playing these games, you definitely feel it. And you feel how, how close we all are. And I think that's what makes an accomplishment like these multiple eight in a row Sweet 16s even the more remarkable. Ed. Uh, Ed Green, your review journal. Hey, Mark. Uh, tomorrow's only the eighth time you've played them, but it just seems like with the dramatic endings, it's more than that. Do you can buy into the rivalry aspect against these guys? And also, can you believe tomorrow is 17 years to the day from Oakland? Uh, I mean, I don't, I can't, can't even remember Oakland. I can't even barely remember last week or last year. Um, 
the interesting thing about this is, you know, uh, Mick and I worked really, really hard all off season a year ago to try to put that game together here. And it, I thought it, it ended up being a fabulous environment. And it was one versus two right after Jalen's shot, you know. And so <clears throat> there's a familiarity uh, with our teams, obviously, back to the 21 Final Four. I mean, you have a lot of the, not a lot, but uh, Singleton, Hawkwes, and uh, Tiger were obviously in that game and, and, and played a lot, at least Hawkwes and, and Tiger did, and obviously Drew did for us. And then last year, you know, I mean, we still, we have many of the, watching the tape earlier this week, I mean, we had our young guards in in that game. We had, you know, Anton played a lot in that game. Obviously, Drew was huge. Um, so a lot of the same characters. So it's kind of the act three here within kind of a small time frame. Yeah. Yeah, hey, Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Mark, coming out of the Baylor uh, championship game in 2021, there might have been a perception about Drew that, hey, you could do this or do that to, you know, shut him down or get him off his game. What's, what's he done, you know, in the last couple years to, you know, sort of stand up to, to different challenges that, that people are throwing at him? I mean, first of all, that was that would – I know that wasn't your take – but I would just say that's kind of an idiotic take that he, I mean, the dude's been posting numbers forever and, and they threw everything at the kitchen table at him that night and even fouled the living daylights out of him. And, um, you know, we just didn't move the ball good enough to make plays and all that. And then Baylor played great. Uh, but so I don't know why anyone would judge him just based on that, but he's been remarkably consistent his entire career at just, he just delivers, he delivers, he delivers. And I mean, we, this year, our first 10 or 15 games, we leaned on him as hard as we've ever leaned on anybody. Just, I mean, even against, in guarantee games, we were in trouble and had to throw him the ball 12 straight times to eke out a seven point win. Um, and so he's just a highly, as, as fun and, and charismatic and goofy and everything as he is off the floor, he is a, elite level competitor uh, when the ball goes up. And I think sometimes, you know, people focus on these great defenders out there and, and, and describe how tough they are. And I mean, I would argue you have to be every bit as tough and a little bit tougher to consistently deliver night in and night out when the opponent is trying to stop you with everything they got, double teams, their best defender, fouling, uh, anything. And he, he's just been able to rise to that occasion time and time again. I mean, he's, and if you look throughout his career, what he's accomplished, and, um, you know, one point at the start of our season, he was almost, had been ranked number one as a player. His team had been ranked number one more weeks than he hadn't been, which, I mean, that's just nuts. I mean, that's like Bill Walton stuff or something, you know. And, and uh, I mean, I think he's going to go down as one of the greatest college players in the modern era here when we're finished. Hey, Mark, Travis Green, Crim2 News in Spokane. Um, you kind of said how this is kind of like an act three mm -hmm. of this matchup. Um, when you look back at the last time you guys played here, you led by 20 at halftime. Yeah. Um, I know we've talked about it in the tournament here, kind of the slow starts. How, how important do you think it is to come out fast in this one? It, it, that was a very, very different game. I mean, you'd have to maybe ask Mick about that. I think that was back when uh, they were looking to play really, really fast maybe. And that was a high tempo, high possession uh, game. Um, and Andrew Nemhart was unbelievable. Uh, I, th I think since then they've probably got a little more possession oriented. And, and, uh, and again, they have the luxury now of kind of being the older, uh, more experienced team. I think it, th this game will come down to you know, uh, us taking care of the ball. Uh, their defense is elite and uh, us being able to make plays and, and find baskets against it. And then us on the flip side, you know, somehow, some way kind of trying to keep Aquez and, and Tiger. And, and then now they're getting great play out of Bailey since he's came into the lineup, kind of doing our best to keep those guys in check. Anything else for Coach View? Coach, thank you, and uh, good yep. luck tomorrow. Yeah, you got it.
We'll be joined shortly by three student athletes from Gonzaga. We'll have Malachi Smith, Anton Watson, and Rasir Bolton. Okay, we're joined here by our student athletes from Gonzaga. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We will bring the microphone to you. Down front. Uh, Travis Green, Crimson News in Spokane. Uh, question for Malachi and Raj here. I know I've talked to you guys the past two weeks. It seems like every matchup is good guards. Uh, again here, this is happening. Maybe another level here. Just what's it like for you guys heading into this matchup, having to D up those guys? Um. I wouldn't say it's the same as TCU or Grand Canyon, but I think it's kind of the same concept of, you know, we got to do our job and get it done. Uh, they definitely got a great backcourt with Tiger and Amari Bailey. Uh, they play very hard and very smart. They all play together and they're, and they're trying to win. They're tough minded. So um, it's definitely going to be another tough matchup. But I think, uh, you know, coach is getting us right with the scout and we just got to go out there and execute it. Uh, I think just um, having the same confidence and mentality in our defense we've been having all year. Uh, you know, like Ross said, they're great players. But um, we got to just go out there and just play, you know, play harder and play team defense. OK, down front. Sports Illustrated Media Group. For anyone who wants to take it, three-point shooting we see is down this tournament. Have you guys noticed anything different about the balls? Are they overinflated? Anything you can comment on with that? Uh, I mean, I think, from, I think just for the whole landscape, like a lot of the balls that we're using, a lot of teams don't play with it. You know, like, I mean, a couple teams in our conference use it, but there would be games where like Tuesday we would play with one ball and then Thursday play with a different one. So I mean, coming to the tournament, some of these teams have never used it and having to prepare for two days with it like isn't a lot of time, but I don't know, maybe just the moment or something, I don't know. I'm going to just go with what you said and blame it on the ball. <laughs> right, in the back. Uh, uh, Brendan Quinn from The Athletic. For, for Malachi, um, last year oh, at Chattanooga, up? yeah. Um, when, uh, you know, the way it ended this year, how many times have you kind of replayed that and, and, and maybe envisioned yourself getting another chance in a moment like that, you know, of late in the game and, and, and whatnot? I mean, you were there last year. You know, you talked to me and you saw how defeated I was. Um, I used that whole, that whole moment uh, for motivation in the off season, and um, you know you kind of have to just forget about it. It's in the past now, but um, coming in like just being able to have a different feeling and just um, going in there uh, super confident and just uh, the fact we made it this far is like you know um, it's been you know it's been a blessing for sure. Other uh, Ed right front. Ed Green, your Review Journal. Uh, you've played them before, so you know what it's like. Tomorrow will only be the eighth time the schools have met. Does that surprise you guys? Is there a rivalry there because of the games I'm sure you've heard about in the past and also the ones you've played them? Yeah, I would say um, there's been a rivalry kind of building up for the past couple years, and it's, you know, every time we play them, it's a high-energy game. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of fans there from both sides, and, you know, they they really want to beat us, and we want to beat them. So um, it's going to be a fun game. Um, we we know what to expect. Uh, you know, they there's just, it's really just going to be competitive from the start. Right down front, right here. Josh Green, Crimson News again. Uh, Anton and Raj, it's probably a good question for you guys. Uh, the last time you guys played was here um, a year ago. You guys were up by 20 at halftime. Um, with how these games have been going of late, do you think it's important to get off to a hot start? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, you never want to start off slow. Um, they're a good defensive team, so I think they're going to come out hot and um, try to pressure us. But um, last game against TCU, we had a slow start, and it was kind of harder to come back in the second half and um, build that build that lead. But 
yeah, I think getting a good start from the jump, uh, getting stops, and you know, seeing some shots go down is going to be good for us. Uh, I would say the same. Uh, I think a good start, you know, definitely helps out uh, as far as team morale and kind of just playing, playing from ahead, maybe. But uh, I don't think we expect to be up 20 uh, at half this game. You know, I'm sure it'll be nice, but uh, I'm sure it'll be a hard fought game. But definitely getting out to a good start will help. But I think it's all about the finish in these games. Yeah, Kevin Sweden from Sports Illustrated. This one for, for Malachi and Rashir. Uh, I'm curious, both of you have been at three schools now. What about Gonzaga makes it so different and so unique? Um, I would just say, like, the competitiveness amongst each other, but, like, still a family. I mean, like, in practice, like, having to guard him every day or guard Tan, like, that makes you better. You know, there's not a lot of players better than these guys. And um, just the mentality of winning, like, everybody wants to win at the highest level. And, you know, we're not satisfied with just winning 20 games or just making the tournament. And um, I think just from all the schools I've been at, like, winning's been the most important thing here. And everybody wants to win just as badly as the next. So I think that's what's made us so successful. Uh, I would say the same. Um, really just uh, I came here just for, like, the family feel. That's why I love it. I love, you know, being a part of this program, you know, what they've done years before me and kind of continuing on their legacy. Uh, and like he said, as far as practice and just the competition aspect, I mean, you know, I got to guard him and then guard Nolan, guard Julian and Hunter all day. So uh, I think just from that aspect of talent and kind of what we have on the team, it makes everybody better and we're all competitive. But at the end of the day, we know we're all together and we're trying to win and achieve the same goal. Any other questions? Thank you, guys, and good luck tomorrow. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. We'll be back at 3.05 with the student athletes from UCLA. Just as a reminder, Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub. That's www.ncaa.veritone.com. The transcripts will be provided by ASAP. They will be posted shortly. Thank you.